Hello again, brothers and sisters. Uh, Pastor Mark here with day two of our weekly series of devotions on the future. Uh, yesterday, we thought a lot more about the present, which sets us up for living right now in the kingdom of God. Um, not just thinking about it in a future sense, but thinking about the here and now of God's kingdom. And for the rest of this week, we're going to think about things that the word of God tells us we will experience. And so today's topic is heaven. And um, the Bible actually has some very specific and helpful and wonderful things to teach us about what happens when the Christian dies. Um, what kind of experience will you have in the presence of God in heaven? Um, and part of the reason I want to teach about this is there is so much bad teaching on what heaven is like in our culture and even within some pseudo-Christian kinds of movements. Um, not quite as much right now, but about seven or eight years ago, there were some very popular books um, about heaven where supposedly somebody had gone to heaven and was going to write a book now and tell you what heaven is going to be like. And it was actually found out later that quite a few of those books were revealed to be totally fabricated and um, actually just uh, sort of even putting pressure on small children to come up with a cute story so that somebody could sell a million copies of a book. We need to have the Berean spirit of Acts 17, which tests everything that we find against the scriptures. Um, you might recall in Acts 17 where the Bereans are these people who are referred to as being of noble character because whenever they would hear something, they would go to the Bible to sort of figure out if what they were hearing about God or about the world or about humanity was accurate according to God's word. And so that's what we need to do, especially about complicated, mysterious topics like heaven. And so we're going to go straight to the Bible. We'll skip over some of the stories that may or may not be true and learn what God says about his dwelling place in the heavens among his people. So I'm going to read from Revelation 5, verses 11 through 14. And I could read all of Revelation 4 and 5 if you have a little bit more time in today's devotions. I would encourage you to go through both chapters fully. But I'm going to read towards the end, Revelation 5, 11. Then I looked, says John, and I heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and 10,000 times 10,000. So he's saying, the number is too great to count. They encircled the throne. This is the throne of God where uh, God the Father, who doesn't have a body but he is present there, and the Lamb who was slain, who is Jesus Christ, are enthroned. They ens these angels encircle that throne and the living creatures and the elders who are closer to the throne. In a loud voice, these angels sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. And so what we learn in Revelation 4 and 5 is that heaven is a place of worship in the presence of God. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Haven't you ever had an experience of worship where you enjoy the presence of God, his word speaks to you in a, a new and profound and, and deeply moving way, or you spend some time in maybe your own prayer life or in prayer in church or you spend your time singing to God and you have connected with the living God through Jesus Christ and it is full of joy. It is full of peace. It's a place that you just don't want to leave. And, and this text says it won't end. This enjoyment of the presence of God as we give him our praise, our wealth, as we ascribe wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise to him. This sounds wonderful to me and um, it should make us um, emboldened now already to live that kind of lifestyle where we can't wait to praise God throughout our day, where we 
already realize that all power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise belongs to him. And so we're going to give up those things um, so that he would receive glory already in this world because we should pray like Jesus taught us to, that, that his kingdom would come here on earth as it is in heaven. And so there's sort of an, an immediate application to thinking about heaven. We want that life, certainly to some extent, now. We want to live a life of praise that honors him. But there's also the future application where the Christian does not have to be afraid to die. The Christian gets to go and experience the unfiltered, immediate presence of God all the time. That is the main teaching in Revelation 4 and 5 about heaven. It's where God is with us. It's where God is um, even visible to us. It's no longer even a place of faith or of prayer, but it's a place of worship at the throne of God. This sounds so good to me, and I just love reading resources about heaven because they, they don't just make me, it certainly don't make me just want to die. Um, they make me want to live right now already in some enjoyment of the love of God. And one of those resources, which I'll, I'll put in the comments of this video, is called Heaven, A World of Love. It's a sermon by Jonathan Edwards. It's one of my two favorite sermons, and I know that many people in our church know that I love that sermon, Heaven, a world of love. Doesn't this sound like a world of love where there is unity? There's unity among people of all different backgrounds. There's unity between angels and people. There's unity between God and his creation. There is perfect unity in the presence of God. And so I love that sermon because um, it really points me to how God's love is there. His love is proceeding from the throne. It's filling every person. And so they can't help but praise him, like what uh, John said, with all that is in them. And so may all that is in you praise God throughout this day, um, giving glory, honor, and praise to him by how you think, by how you live, by what you say, and uh, by the decisions that you make. Have a great day, everyone.